It's time for another Dice Tower review from Gamer's Remorse. Hello, welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're playing Out of this Galaxy by Fractal Evolution Games. I probably pronounced that wrong. Out of this Galaxy is a 2 to 8 player game with an estimated play time of 60 to 90 minutes. Play begins with each player getting a random starting engine, weapons, shields, and ship card, as well as 400 gold worth of coins, and 3 markers in each blue, red, and green. Play works with the high roller going first. Turns begin with players repairing their ship if they are in a space dock, and then removing and discarding active penalty cards, and finally rolling both die and adding the rolled numbers together. All players will check to see if the rolled sum correlates to the numbers on their engine card, and if so, giving the correlating number of spaces. After moving, players will check and see if the space they landed on have any activated events and if so, triggering said events. If the space you would land on is occupied, your ship continues to the next open space on the game board. As players fly about the board, they will gather cards which activate immediately or at a time later explained on each card. Some cards provide treasure, while others will move the players forwards or backwards or have various other events such as being ambushed by space pirates. When players land on a wormhole, they are warped to the other end of the hole, whether that be forward or backward depending on which side they land on. On a black hole, your ship is stuck until a turbo speed is rolled for your engine. Meteor spaces indicate that you must block meteors with your shields by rolling a d12 and seeing if the roll surpasses the hit count for the number of meteors shown on the space. You can choose to remove one of your blue tokens to up your roll by 3, but said tokens must be discarded before you roll the die. If a meteor strikes your ship, discard the adequate number of green integrity tokens. Pirates act like meteors, only now you are using weapons against the pirates instead of your shields. Again, you can discard tokens, only in this case red, to increase your die roll, and again it must be done before you roll the die. If you don't shoot down enough pirates, they manage to damage your ship, and again you must discard the proper number of green integrity tokens. Throughout the game, players may encounter missions and spaceports enabling them to possibly upgrade the ship's shields, weapons, or engines at a cost of some of their gold. If you're lucky, you'll land on a trade route which will act as a shortcut, enabling you to save great, valuable time. When you land on a space dock, you can choose to repair your ship's integrity, or if your ship explodes, you'll resume at the most recent space dock that you have passed. The first player to arrive at the end location wins, and no, you do not need to roll the exact distance. Alright, I will start the game by rolling both of the d6s, which were just taken from me. <laughs> just taken from you. You don't deserve them. And on our engine class, I rolled a five. Sean, do you have a five? I do. I move two. I'm going to start a mission by warping over to this path over here. Five, I will move two, and I get a mission card. The mission card is a ship integrity of five, value 200. You are integritized. Eight. I rolled an eight, I have a three. I do not have an eight, so Brian goes. Will you do me the honor of moving my ship three spaces? One, two, three. Mission! I'm going to accept that mission. Jerk. I roll it up. Five. Do you have a five? I do not have a five. I have a five. I get to move two. I get another mission card. So I missed you. moved you off mission. Mission card. Mission add-on. Shield is now plus one to defense roll. So four. Do you have a four movement? I do not. I do. I roll two. Or I move okay. two. One, two. Event card. Advance eight spaces. Only three spaces if in the lead. One, two, three. I get another mission card. Damn, you are banking on these missions. Weapon is now plus one to attack. Damn. Will you move me five spaces as I turbo wow. through this one, mission? One, two, three, four, five. All blank spots. As some would say. I rolled an eight. Do you have an eight? I do have an eight. I will move three spaces, please. One, two, three. You get a bonus card. Alliance, allow use of trade routes. Nice. I do not have an eight, so turn passes to Brian. Who rolls a three? All right, so and then I roll one, so I get a pirate one. So in space, there are space pirates. I am now a space pirate. It looks like a sombrero. So I need to roll a nine plus. However, I have a plus one that are always going, so I have to roll an eight plus. Do it. Actually, don't do it. We're not, this isn't a co-op. And that's a six. So you lose one of your integrity. Due to the duration of the game, let's speed things up a little. 
Players will continue rolling the six-sided dice, checking the rolled sum against their engine card, and moving the adequate number of spaces along the board, and acting the landed upon spaces special actions. In the gameplay, Sean managed to acquire an upgraded ship, engine, weapon, and shields. Brian, meanwhile, managed to acquire gold, and the ability to take plenty of trade routes. Despite the random nature of player movement, the two seem to manage to remain fairly neck and neck for the duration of the game. So let us now rejoin the players in real time. Three. I turbo for me. Twelve. Twelve plus 13. one. Thirteen. Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No! <laughs> oh. So you can now only move mm. on three, six, and eleven. And two and twelve. How about five? Five doesn't, doesn't help neither of us any good. I like eights. You don't? Nope. That's you? That's me. One, two, three. Bonus card. 200 gold. Six. Not eight. eight. Works. All, two, All right. three. One, two, three. Nine. Four. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to sail through here because I'm Double stuck turbo. Move hole. maximum turbo movement now. Wow. One, two, three, four. This could be the end. Eight. One, two, three, four, eight, or nine. Nine. I move five. One, two, three, four. Winner! Pirates always prosper. This has been Out of the Galaxy. Uh, Sean, would you like to open us up with the rule? Yeah. Um. The rule? Rule. The rubric? <laughs> the rubric. Uh, yeah. The review. The review of the game. Tell me about the game. Yes. I'll hit head into my rubric. Uh, quality of components, zero to two. I gave it a one. They probably could have found like space currency. I know Hegemonic made these fantastic space coins. That was just some nitpickery I had. Overall, the board seemed decently laid out once we started playing it, but when you first unbox it, it was like, oh, this is really busy. There's a lot of dots. This game is going to take hours to play. It really didn't take that long. Good balance of skill to luck, zero to one. I just talked about that a little bit. I gave it 0.75. The randomness seemed to balance itself out. I've noticed this phenomenon in several games. One person can be extremely unlucky in one facet, but extremely lucky in another, right? So Brian over here was winning up ahead. He was doing fantastic moving forward, but he wanted this engine to seal the deal. I managed to grab it by pure luck, mm -hmm. right? But he was lucky enough to not get sent back in wormholes or stuck in a black hole. So it was really cool to see those two mechanics, yeah. though very random, balance each other out. Analysis paralysis, zero to one. I gave it one. There isn't a whole lot of options here, right? You roll a die, you check your list, you see how far you can move. You have the occasional option. Do you want to go on a mission? Do you want to go on a trade route? Those sorts of things. Do you want to buy a card? Those are all your options. It's not so immersive and, and so convoluted that people get lost in the mechanics like uh, some other games. I'm not going to pick on any games today, but there are other games, certain Euros that, you know, do I want to invest in this or that? Anyway. Theme, zero to two. I gave it a one. It had the space theme. It has some cool space dock, Pizarro's hideout. I'm sure there's some references in here that I don't get. It seems like there could have been more to it. There could have been like little alien cards and said there's pirates. And I get space pirates, you know, I mean, that's kind of the whole Firefly thing. Seemed like the artwork kind of backed that up a little bit more. Uh, Thrill vs. Competitive, 0-2. to two. I gave it 1.5 because honestly, towards the end, when Brian was way up here, I was almost considering giving up. And then I started getting fantastic rolls. Again, that randomness seemed to play into it and balance itself out to the point where I was like, I can win this thing. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I was ahead of you here. And then I got stuck in a black hole and you just passed by me. But, I mean, I definitely felt the Thrill Competitive edge to it. Which is crazy because it's advanced shoots and ladders, but it was a lot of fun, which goes into my next point. Was it fun? One to two. I gave it a two. I really liked it, and I didn't think I would. So that, that says a lot. And this is one of the rare games that actually pulled me back and said, no, Sean, don't judge a book by its cover. Give it a shot. And I, I really had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I gave it a 7.25. So that's, that's a pretty good score. I mean, this is, this is a good indie game. I would, I would definitely recommend it. What do you think, Brian? As I think all gamers have to admit deep down in our gaming souls, when you open a game, you have predispositions towards it. Mm -hmm. And for both of us, our predisposition was, oh, look, it's Candyland. 
the Jeez. non-artful version. Oh. And then we start playing it, and we see the wormholes, and we're like, oh, it's like Candyland, it's shooting some ladders. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we actually start playing the game, and it's like, you know what, you guys are wrong. Stop judging me before <laughs> you play me. Which is weird when you hear a game start talking to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably something in the water around here. Um, <laughs> So with no further ado, let's jump in. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the visuals, between one and two, I did only give that a one. Uh, the visuals are not something that you would look at and be like, wow, these are amazing. Um, they are actually quite mediocre. Uh, you could have a much more space-aged font. The card backs were moderately boring. Um, the coins are not thematic at all. For the skill and luck, the zero to one, I gave that a 0.5. Um, the balance is there, but there is a lot of luck. Mm-hmm. And Sean did mention that somehow the luck seems to self-balance itself. Right. But at the same time, I could have gotten the engine earlier, and I could have just shattered everything. You know, he could have hit every wormhole. He could have been stuck at that first wormhole, just looping. Um, there, there's all these chances that are there. They're unlikely, but they are there. And I always find that disconcerting because there's the chance that that will happen to that guy that you're trying to get into gaming and this will keep him from ever trying another game. Uh, pacing zero to two, I give that a two. The game does take a while to play out, but every turn you are involved. Even when the other players are rolling, you can be moving. And you can be looking at the cards you have and oh, I could use this card because I'm not getting to move. Or I can move double my turbo now. Um, so even when it's not your turn, you are in the game which I found quite exciting. Theme and immersion, zero to two, I give that 1.5. The theme was slightly there, but not entirely. I already mentioned the coins that were kind of off. Um, Sean mentioned the pirates, space pirates, yes, but aliens would have made more sense for the average gamer who is not deeply into the sci-fi world. I didn't feel like I was necessarily flying through space, but by the end of the game, I didn't care so much. And out of mechanics, 0 to 1, I did give that a 0.5. A lot of the mechanics were enjoyable, and they made it worth playing. I really liked the different, you know, uh, you can accept a mission, or you can choose not to take that long route. If you land on a trade route, if you have the ability to take it, you can, but again, you don't have to. But then wormholes, you have to go forward or backwards. That's the shooting ladders. I liked the different meteors and pirates and how they interacted differently versus your shields or weapons. I liked the ability to sacrifice one of your three chits to advance that which is where I feel a lot of the skill came into play. Um, But at the same time, I feel like there are some things that could pay off better. Like, I defeat the pirates, why do I not get something out of that? And then was it fun? Zero to two, I gave that one and a half. I did enjoy it. Uh, If my friends wanted to play a space game, this wouldn't be my first shot. If they wanted to play a roll and move game, this probably wouldn't be my first pick. If they wanted to play a game with uh, Roman currency, (laughs) then this might be my first pick. Uh, Not many games that I've played have Roman currency. Uh, That's not a requirement many of my friends bring to the table. Um, So it does fill a niche. It is fun. It is enjoyable. I would play it again, uh, but it wouldn't be the first game I grab off the shelf. Right. Um, I almost think we need to look at the audience for this, too. mm -hmm. I don't think this is a game I would play with my hardcore gamer friends. Mm -hmm. They would balk at this outright, unfortunately. But I would play it with my younger cousins, right? I would play it with my nieces as they get old. Well, maybe nephews, if... I have any. You know what I mean? Like, it, you really have to pick your audience. Yeah. This is not a hardcore Euro. Yeah, I mean, you could make some house rules and whatnot. If you could reduce this down to, a, say, a 30-minute game, I could see it working with a younger audience right. to bridge them from the games that you have children playing, those Candylands, the Streets and Ladders, into, you know, eventually saying, hey, let's play Race for the Galaxy. Let's play Insert Other Space Game Here or Fun Game. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to shoot some letters in Candyland. Yeah, or maybe for a shorter game, you could play to this planet, mm-hmm. you know, or play to this planet. Yeah. I wonder if there's some variants you could do, you know. Yeah. So for uh, eight to ten year olds, you play to this one. Yeah. And, you know, the kids could really get in that. Like, Let's play to the next planet. Now. Yeah. Ooh, you know. Yep. So I, I think it's more towards a younger players' mm-hmm. market, I would say, and and less serious gamers. Yeah. I would consider playing this with gamers that are my friends that Mm -hmm. aren't self-proclaimed game players. If you watch your old videos, we have had a previous guest named Ben. I could see him enjoying a game like this. Oh, yeah. Very basic, but enjoyable at the same time. Mm -hmm. That said, you gave it a... I gave it a 7. You gave it a 7.25. So so 7.125. 7.1. 
because we don't like lots of decimals. That's right. Anyway. And, yeah, and if you need currency for other games, you get plenty. Boom. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yep. Not cleaning that up. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Yeah. Boom.